us some momentum in the movement where we have finally have democracy in the Liberal Party. To have that sort of rotting of the whole system, that's completely wrong. One member, one vote, so we can all have a say in, the, in all the votes that go on in the Liberal Party. So common sense, I don't see why we're even discussing this. It would be a greater party if everybody had more of a say. It's a big step we have to go forward with that. Hoping for democracy in the party, um, the younger people can have a vote. I think that's what everyone's hoping for. We started to lose members because there is no fair go for everybody. I think people want to be involved in a political party because they care about something and they want to have a say and they're completely shut out under this system and I think that it's, it's appalling. The New South Wales Liberal Party's membership would have been six or seven times larger then than it is today. And what we've lost is that big, broad base of membership is we simply don't have enough members. And it is critically important that for both of us, and I know that we can collaborate on this, and of course in Queensland we're one party, uh, we need to reach out to get a much broader base of membership. We need, this is a, not simply a recruiting exercise, in some respects you could say it's a modernisation exercise. We need to have parties where our members are given more of an opportunity to have their opinions heard and valued. They need to know that their views are important and that all members are given a fair say in both policy formulation and the decision making processes of their party. Uh, they desire met people who, if you want people to join your political movement, you, and we, we know this is common sense, but as Tony Nutt will recall when I was uh, chairman of the Menzies Research Centre, always being interested in this issue, we got some research done by Crosby Texter back in 2002, and as usual, the research told you what you knew already, it was common sense, but people, 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 desire, people desire recognition from the organisation that their contribution is valued all the time and not just at election time. So that means we have to explore the need to hold more open party forums, more frequent and direct access to MPs at meetings, more open delegate selection and pre-selection processes. Uh, being a party member, has to count for more. Well, good day. Congratulations uh, for coming along to the convention today. We need to make the Liberal Party as attractive as possible. We need more members. You know that, I know that. And I strongly believe the way we can attract more members is by empowering the existing ones, giving every single member a view and a say in this party on an ongoing basis. And there can be nothing more important than having a say for every member on who their Member of Parliament should be. If we empower our membership, we've got a great opportunity to encourage more and more people into the Great Liberal Party. So I thank you for your work. We've started the journey. There's more to do, uh, but by you being there today, we can make a real difference. And I thank you for what you've done and what you're going to do. Ladies and gentlemen, isn't it terrific to see the, uh, the PM and the Premier leading from the front? They could not be with us today, but they are with us in their strong message of support. But more importantly, I am confident they will lead from the front at next week's critically important AGM by ensuring that our motion is not only heard, but fully supported by the Prime Minister and the Premier. Not a bad combination. You saw the powerful statements of support from the entire spectrum of the leadership this morning. It will certainly take no less than the collective will of the lifeblood of the party, its membership and the courage of the leadership to effect the changes that will reinstate the party to its rightful position. We have to ensure that change is underpinned by values and a culture that we can all be proud of, a culture that listens to its membership, listens to the electorate. The party will never have a strong connection with the broader electorate unless it first establishes a strong connection to its immediate supporter base, the grassroots that is the cornerstone of the party. We must start by getting our own house in order, by proceeding with the principle of one member, one vote. This is the catch cry underpinned by valuing and respecting every member in the simplest and most powerful way. 
by giving every member a genuine say in who is their local member in all the relevant internal elections reflected in our motion before State Council. I have no interest in discrimination and prejudice reflected in the current system based on two classes of members. They are the all powerful who have a say and the 95% of the party who are the forgotten members that have been silenced. Menzies would not be pleased. The irony would not be lost on him to find that the new forgotten people are the members of his own party. <laughs> Now, most good, clear thinking people know the membership must have a say, must have more say, and the rot must stop. When we design the reform package, it can't be skewed to any individuals or factions. The reforms must be real and broad reaching, but must also respect incumbent parliamentarians. And this need for respect applies to all sides of the debate. We don't need faceless party officials as we saw this week, briefing journalists that this event is a gathering of fringe-dwelling extremists. The only fringe-dwellers are those that don't believe in democracy. Yeah. Now, it is my pleasure to read you a message from Connie, and then I'll have my own words to say. As many of you will be aware, the Federal Coalition Government is currently working to secure the numbers in the Senate to ensure the passage of the plebiscite legislation on the definition of marriage. The ongoing and possible future definition of marriage is an important issue and accordingly, the Liberal National Coalition has advocated for a plebiscite since before the last election. However, Whilst the Federal Coalition wishes to afford this right to each and every Australian, when it comes to affording democratic rights, the New South Wales Division of the Liberal Party will not afford a similar democratic measure to its members when it comes to choosing candidates and senior office bearers. As a sitting senator who has faced numerous pre-selections, I assure you, I have no concern in allowing the general membership of the New South Wales Division having their say in my pre-selection and in my capacity to represent the party. If ordinary rank and file members are valued enough to attend functions, make regular financial donations and brave not only the elements but also the ALP on polling day, then each and every one of them should be valued enough to choose their party's candidates and office bearers. One member, one vote. Plebiscites yeah. yeah. and the other reforms outlined in the John Howard Committee report will open up the New South Wales Division to much greater grassroots involvement and will bring it into line with other divisions around Australia. Kind regards, Connie. Now, as a former Member of Parliament, I believe it's important that all elected members acknowledge they are where they are because of the party membership. Yeah. Now, it's our outstanding volunteering members that give so much of themselves. Get in return, they're not afforded an opportunity to have a say in the pre-selection of our candidates. We as a party owe it to our membership to be afforded an opportunity to participate in the candidate selection process. Many of you have been telling me for about a year or so before that pre-selection that I had no chance of winning. My wife and I decided to give it a go, give it a run, because I really wanted to know how this party worked. Much to my surprise in the election, over 10,000 people voted for me below the line. <laughs> to you all, I say thank you. But I suspect uh, the vote wasn't as much for me as it was about protesting against how the party is run. More people voted for an unwinnable candidate below the line than there are members in the New South Wales division of the Liberal Party. I've no objection to factions, it's human nature to form them. 
but they should be based at least partially, partially on an idea. I've no objection to lobbyists, but they should never be involved in picking the politicians that they ultimately lobby, in no way at all. What we've got now is something terrible, and that is members of parliament, candidates for the membership in this division, are not necessarily chosen on merit, as you know, they are chosen for their allegiance to a power broker. And that's bad enough, but what is worse? <laughs> what is worse is when the power broker is a lobbyist. Because as you know, as you know, lobbyists provide access to politicians. If anyone can't see any problem in that, a glaring, outrageous problem, a scandal they ought to enrol in Ethics 101. <laughs> There's a stark and simple choice. It's between reform or it's between self-destruction. Delay is no alternative because that only covers the indefensible. So I commend the resolution of the Ringa FEC. I joined in 2008 because I wanted to promote the values and aspirations of the Liberal Party at every opportunity. And my 10-year ban took effect in September 2016. I was a councillor and was seeking re-election. But because I did not control the locked up branches, I could not get endorsed. I decided I wanted to continue to represent the community I know so well. And for this crime, I got my 10 year ban. Shame. Shame. I would have thought I was an asset to the Liberal Party. In any case, I ended up beating the Liberal Party endorsed candidate 17%. In a technology driven and globalised world, the diversity of thought diversity of perspectives, diversity of experiences will add value to the policies and decisions we make that will help shape the state and our nation. Unfortunately, the party has become hostage to the power of play of a few and real members such as yourself, the ones that have carried the party for decades, have become bit players in the decision making process. We need to ensure that the party renews and stays a reflection of the community we serve. The reality is, uh, as a Victorian, um, very rarely is the opportunity given to us to come north and to advise you on anything. <laughs> so, it was incumbent upon me, uh, receiving such a generous offer, to fly up at six in the morning to join you here on a Saturday. Um, it is incumbent upon the New South Wales Division to lead the National Liberal Party. Um, traditionally, this has been the seat of power for the Liberal Party, and with a failing New South Wales, we will have a failing Liberal Party and in turn a failing coalition. In the state of Victoria in the mid-2000s, we had an argument, a debate, uh, around how we were going to try and democratise our division of the party. And our decision was that we would give one member one vote. It's a fairly simple concept. And further than that, we democratised the manner in which we would elect our state executive, and which we call the administrative committee, and all of our internal party positions. Now, over the ensuing eight years, we have had a, 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 a flourishing of the capacity of the Victorian division, so much so that at the last federal election, we were the only state not only to hold all the seats which we had gone into 2013 with, but we picked one up. And in New South Wales, I was shocked when I looked at the results after the 2016 election in, in July. You lost seven seats. I don't know how this division can continue to argue for the current process when you had an electoral wipeout in this state. Seven seats. So our experience in Victoria has been quite simple. When, you, when, when plebiscite reform came in, when organisational reform came in, there were many benefits. And uh, some of those which we have experienced is obviously a growth in membership. And for the first time in 50 years, in 50 years, the Victorian Division's membership is consistently growing. So ladies and gentlemen, it is a no-brainer in this state. Um, and as, as head of membership and, and, and training on the uh, state executive, um, I can say uh, to you guys that you will see an automatic result in the changes that happen 
within your electorate conferences and also importantly the types of people who turn up for pre-selection. I'm pleased to say that Hawkesbury and Lane Cove are backing Baird. Uh, both uh, Don Perrottet and myself in my conference, I've moved it, we are backing Manly. We will have a plebiscite, whether State Council allows it or not, we'll have a plebiscite next round of pre-selections to determine who the candidate is in Lane Cove. Yeah. And if we have to shame other MPs into giving uh, their root and branch members votes, we'll do it. Because I can tell you that if you are a good, competent, capable and hard-working MP that represents your members, you have nothing to fear. Yeah. You have nothing to fear. I want to say thank you to all of you for being here today because what you're doing is saying that our members want their party back. That's what you're saying. Now, when something like 40% of the people of our country do not think that one or other of the major parties is worthy of their vote, we have a problem. Now, and as you look at the Liberal Party, it's absolutely obvious what we need. We need more members and we need less factions. Yeah. To end the closed shop, as John Howard called it, the only way to make our party less of an insider's club is to invite everyone in and to give everyone who comes in a say in doing the one thing that we absolutely rely upon political parties to do, to choose a candidate for parliament. We want real democracy, we want it now, and our message to all our fellow Liberals next weekend is just get it done. Just get it done. That's what we need next weekend. See you there, see you there. I'm delighted this morning to launch the Democratic Reform phone application. So I encourage you to go to the App Store and do a search on Democratic Reform and download it. You'll have all of today's speeches there. It's something so important, yet we think of it as something that we can't achieve at the moment. I hope that everyone who is here today will be in contact with the Prime Minister and the Premier. Uh, obviously they are sympathetic. Uh, we need them not just sympathetic, uh, we need them determined to make a difference. And if they're determined to make a difference, we will be a much better political party in the years ahead. And our democracy will be much stronger in the years ahead. I'm very hopeful that, you know, with Mike Baird on side and Turnbull, that maybe they can bring about change and be an organisation that young people can be a part of and have a say in.